On this episode of the Catholic Echo podcast from the Diocese of Youngstown, we're talking about the season of Lent with Bishop David Bonner, Father Michael Bolish, and Monsignor David Rhodes. Find more about this episode's topic, including articles from the Catholic Echo at catholicecho.org slash podcast. And now, the host of the Catholic Echo podcast, Father Jim Corda. Hello and welcome to the Catholic Echo podcast. I'm your host, Father Jim Corda. Our show is brought to you by the annual Diocesan Appeal, the Catholic Communication Campaign, and Cumulus Media Youngstown. With me is Bishop David Bonner. Welcome to our show. Thank you, Father Corda. It is always a delight to be here. You know, this last Wednesday, we began the season of Lent with Ash Wednesday, the normal beginning to help us embark this uh, 40 days of penance, abstinence, almsgiving, and prayer. Why is it so important for us as a Catholic people to immerse ourselves once again, and even annually, into this season of Lent? I think it comes down to one word, conversion. We all are in need of conversion. We're in need of changing our hearts. That's, I think, the real challenge of these 40 days and these Mm -hmm. practices that we engage in, these acts of discipline, these acts of denial, are all opportunities for us to be changed and to draw ever closer to Jesus. The three marks of the Lenten season really are are prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Let's take each of them separately and let's talk about them. Let's first lift up prayer. Why is prayer so fundamental as to who we are and our relationship, not only uh, with one another, but especially with God? Well, I'm reminded of of an old saying that seven days without prayer makes one week, not Mm. W-E-E-K, but W-E-A-K. We can't be true disciples if we don't take time to pray personally with our God and share in that prayer with one another in various ways, most notably the Holy Mass. We know that in the Gospels, Jesus would often leave his disciples. He would go to a quiet place or he would go to a mountain just to be with his father. And so I think he was modeling the importance of having a foundation, but also having a relationship with the father. Let's just remind the folks that are with us that prayer doesn't always have to take the form of something so formal, but it could just be a moment in our life or a moment in our day or a moment in our crazy, hectic schedule just to pause and to say, thank you, God, for the blessings. Thank you, God, or implore the Lord for assistance or whatever. Oftentimes in our very hectic world, we do not take the time for prayer. And prayer doesn't have to be lengthy. It could be as short as saying, thank you, Jesus. Let's go into fasting. You know, there's another word that we use, and that's abstinence, but we do that particular times during the Lenten season. Let's talk about fast and abstinence. So fasting allows us to step back from our normal course, to empty Mm ourselves in the spirit of Jesus, who embraced that sense of kenosis, of Mm self-emptying. Our lives can become so full that we can just miss the whole idea of what we're about, what we're supposed to be about. So, you know, fasting, it doesn't always feel good, but fasting can bring clarity. It can bring a renewed focus in our lives. And so fasting is something that is, and it isn't just about food, fasting from food. It's fasting from the phone. Mm -hmm. It's fasting from perhaps your favorite TV show. It's fasting from, you know, your favorite candy bar. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that we can pull away from And we need to take the focus beyond what I'm giving up to what I'm doing it for. I'm Mm -hmm. giving this to you, Lord. You know, oftentimes when we enter in the season of Lent, typical question that many Catholics ask one another is, what did you give up or what are you giving up? But it's not a matter, as you had say, of giving up. It's really kind of giving in to God and understanding that we're in this penitential yet joyful time season in preparation to celebrate the holy this time of the year, and that is his resurrection, his gift of new life to us for eternity. The sense of abstinence, I recall a time when the church kind of lapsed the Fridays of Lent where they said you didn't always have to, or you could eat meat sometimes, you didn't have to eat meat. I remember my parents, God rest their souls, always, every Friday, whether it was Lent or not, abstaining from meat. And so there's that sense for us as Catholics that we recall 
we celebrate those those moments throughout the year, not just during the Lenten season. Let's talk about almsgiving. You know, that's something that we kind of shy away from because this world of inflation, this world of uh, money being tight, prices soaring and so forth, almsgiving is something that we don't always think about. And yet it's not always about money, but we can give what we are really worth, and that could be our time or our talent. So let's talk briefly about almsgiving. Well, I I appreciate what you said, that it's not always about money, because there's so much that we can give. I think one of the most important things that we can give is our time, our time to others. We live in a world where it's so fast-paced, it's so technologically driven. You know, just I'm sure you've seen this picture where you're in a restaurant and perhaps a couple is there, or a family is gathered there, and they're all sitting there. They read the menu, and then the next thing you know, they all go to their phones, mm-hmm. and they're, mm-hmm. they're looking at their phones, or they're texting someone else. They're present in the same space, but they're not attentive to each right. other. Right. So I think almsgiving is a way of, of coming out of ourselves, mm-hmm. giving of ourselves in some way for the good of others. It, it's offering a gaze, an ear, a sense of accompaniment, trying to identify with their plight. You know, you had mentioned earlier on about Ash Wednesday, receiving the blessed ashes with the sign of the cross on our forehead. And as many Catholics will do that symbolically on Ash Wednesday, I have done that on Ash Wednesday, that when they go home, usually later at night or the next day, they'll wash that off. But how do we kind of preserve that cross of ashes on our forehead that is no longer there? You know, when we come back from Ash Wednesday celebration, we look in the mirror, we'll see the ashes. But if it's washed away, what can help us remind ourselves that that's still there? Not just during the season of Lent, but knowing that we are called to pick up that cross and walk daily with the Lord. I think one of the keys is just keeping an image of the cross nearby. Mm -hmm. Many of us wear crosses Mm -hmm. around our neck. As a bishop, Mm -hmm. I wear a pectoral cross. And there are times when I will just reach for that cross and hold on to that and and say a prayer, Mm -hmm. Passion of Christ, strengthen me, or Jesus, be with me. I think even to place a cross on one's pillow so that before one goes to sleep, there's that sense that Jesus loves me. He died for me. And I'm called to follow in his footsteps and deny myself and pick up my cross Mm -hmm. and help others carry their cross. Just making the sign of the cross when we fall asleep, when we wake up, or just throughout the day. I know a lot of people do that when they drive by a church, Mm -hmm. but I think it could be even more than that. You know, I know some people that even when they're writing something, they make the sign of the cross on the paper. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I think whatever we can do to keep that image front and center. And remember, the cross has two directions. There is the vertical and the horizontal. It's all about love. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is outpouring of love for us. But that love is something that he shared with the Father very deeply, embracing his will. And then that love extends horizontally to the entire world. Mm -hmm. And he calls us into that love when he says, love one another as I have loved you. And I like that image that you had mentioned that the cross is vertical and horizontal. And we as disciples of Jesus, as followers of the Lord, need to kind of keep that in mind, that we have a relationship not just with God, but we have a relationship with one another. And especially during the season of Lent, we're more mindful of the need to grow closer to God and to one another in the church to celebrate eventually not only the resurrection here on earth, but the resurrection of new life that we will share someday with God in heaven. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Please join Catholic Charities by helping to support the Warm Hearts for Warm Homes campaign, formerly known as Keep the Kids Warm. The Warm Heart for Warm Homes campaign helps to provide direct utility assistance to families with children, working poor adults, and older adults on fixed incomes. Last year, Catholic Charities agencies impacted thousands of people through utility assistance efforts. Unfortunately, this year the need for heat and utility assistance continues to rise. Catholic Charities is asking for your help to make Warm Hearts for Warm Homes a success by giving to your local parish online at www.ccdoy.org or by calling Catholic Charities at 330 744 
8451. Wondering what happened to timely Catholic news in the Diocese of Youngstown? It's at CatholicEcho.org. There, you'll find recent stories about Catholic life in all six counties of the Diocese of Youngstown, plus recent videos, podcasts, and even national and global news. You'll find it all at CatholicEcho.org under the News tab. Sign up for the email newsletter while you're there to have Catholic news delivered to your inbox. With me is Father Michael Ballish, who is the Director of Worship for the Diocese of Youngstown. Welcome to our show. Good morning, Father Corda. We know that Lent started this past Wednesday with Ash Wednesday, and we're going to talk now about the season of Lent, what it's all about, what are some of the salient points of why we do what we do during the Lenten season. Let's go back to the beginning of Ash Wednesday. What was so significant about Ash Wednesday, and why do we begin it with the celebration of ashes? Well, I think the the significance of Ash Wednesday is to recall our humanity and also to make us aware that we're broken, we're sinful people that, that are in need of healing and forgiveness. And the ashes is a way to make us mindful of that. I often assimilate the signing of the ashes on our forehead as also signing on our heart, that our heart needs to be converted from the, the sinfulness that we engage in to being more whole and holy. You know, it's interesting as you were talking, one thing that immediately comes to mind is that once we've received the ashes on our forehead, usually we kind of go about our daily life that day. And then at night or the next morning, we kind of wash those off our forehead. And so they're no longer present. We no longer see that sign and symbol. And so we kind of tend to forget what's going on the rest of Lent because we don't have that visible reminder. Almost like for us as priests, you know, on the day of our ordination, we have our hands blessed with oil. And sometimes over the years, that oil kind of dries up. So what can we as Catholics do to keep those ashes uh, significant and, and before us throughout this entire season of Lent? Well, I think a primary way to do that is to be mindful of the hallmarks of Lent, mm -hmm. which is prayer, sacrifice, and almsgiving. And I think the season affords us the opportunity to keep those three characteristics at the forefront of our mind, which then allows the signing from the ashes to remain present to us. Oftentimes when someone talks about Lent, they talk about what they give up. You know, that's kind of an old standby for us as Catholics. Well, well, what did you give up? Did you give up chocolate or did you give up drinking pop or whatever it was? Why do we have to kind of get away from that sense of giving up something and doing more in the area, as you had mentioned, with prayer and fasting and almsgiving? Well, I think one of the things we need to keep in mind is the whole understanding of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And I think for most people they have a very elementary understanding or surface understanding of what sacrifice means. When you go into the whole understanding of Eucharist as a sacrifice and the sacrifice of giving something up for Lent, meaning behind sacrifice is to be made whole, to be made holy. And so the transformative power of a sacrifice is not only just giving something up, but also the second part is that how in doing that practice do we become more whole? Do we become more holy and more in touch with God? You know, I think a lot of people give up candy or give up ice cream and they stop at that. Mm -hmm. But I think the second piece is, you know, to realize that it's just not giving up candy or ice cream. It's also how in engaging in that practice we become more whole, mm -hmm. we become more holy. I often think of the fact that if I give up something for Lent, whether it be ice cream or going out to eat, mm -hmm. that's part one. Part two is then using that money that I would use to go out to eat and giving that to the poor. It's in that gesture that I become 
a more holistic and more holy person. And so I think it's important to not forget the second part of sacrifice. And that's what this whole season of Lent allows us to be more engaged in. Let's go back to that word sacrifice, because if we go back to Jesus's 40 days in the desert, certainly he sacrificed. The Bible tells us that he fasted for 40 days. So that tells us that he did something that was above and beyond what we as human beings normally do. We eat, we drink, we sleep. So why was it significant for us as Catholic Christians to go back to seeing how Jesus did it during those 40 days as we try to replicate these 40 days? Well, I think it's important to keep in mind that what happened after Jesus fasted for 40 days in the desert, he took on his ministerial public role. And so the sacrifice of the fasting was a way for him to then continue that sacrifice by taking on his public role in ministry. You know, very often we talk about the Eucharist as a sacrifice. Well, the Eucharist as a sacrifice is in that in offering ourselves to God and the gifts of the bread and wine to God, we are transformed into a different person. I often will tell my people at Mass that you should be different from the time you walk into Mass Mm -hmm. and when you walk out. Because the sacrifice of the Mass, the engaging in that celebration and sharing in the body and blood of Christ, transforms us into a person as we leave Mass ready to take on the world for the next six days. And so it goes back to the understanding that sacrifice is what we engage in to change us. And Christ was changed by the fasting of 40 days in the desert. He was changed into a person that was then able to take on his public ministry, which he did. We know that Lent lasts for 40 days. What is important for us to remember throughout these 40 days, but then beyond, even beyond, because we know that next year then we'll celebrate Lent once again, and then next year we'll celebrate it once again. So what is it that we have inside us that needs to totally change to be open to what is the end goal? Well, I think the end goal of of Lent is to fully participate and celebrate the new life that we receive at the resurrection. Lent is 40 days. The Easter season is 50 days. And so what those 40 days of Lent allow us to do is to lead us to the resurrection so that on Easter Sunday and for the 50 days afterwards, we can fully celebrate and embrace and live the new life that we've received because of Christ rising from the dead. And the color of Lent is purple. Why is that significant, briefly? Purple is a penitential color, and so it's used in the church during Lent just to remind us of our need to repent for our sinfulness and to be reconciled back to God so that on Easter Sunday, when we wear our Easter clothes and the church changes to white, we can embrace the celebration of the resurrection. Father Michael Ballish, thank you for being with us. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Did you know that the Catholic Echo magazine is delivered 10 times per year to 52,000 Catholic households in Northeast Ohio? That is more than 150,000 people. And the Catholic Echo website, catholicecho.org, has been averaging 30,000 views per month since it launched in February 2023. Advertise your business, special event, or service with the Catholic Echo in print or online. Email catholicecho at youngstowndiocese.org. Advertising discounts are available for Catholic institutions, as well as for businesses that commit to five or ten issues in a year. Email catholicecho at youngstowndiocese.org. Or visit the Advertising tab at catholicecho.org for more information. If you have a story idea for the Catholic Echo magazine, podcast, or website, send an email to catholicecho at youngstowndiocese.org. We'd love to hear your ideas.
Joining me is Father David Rose, who is Pastor Emeritus of St. Christine Church in Youngstown. Welcome to our show. Thank you. You know, we just heard from Bishop Bonner on the season of Lent. Also, we talk with Father Michael Bolish, who is the Director of Worship for the Diocese, who gave us a nice background into the season. I'd like us to talk on a different level, more of a historical kind of way of what the season of Lent is all about. Why do we celebrate it? Where do we find its roots? Let's talk about some of those biblical things that we hear about. For example, the first Sunday about the temptations. Next Sunday, we'll talk about the transfiguration and subsequent events in the life of Jesus. So where do we find the roots of the season of Lent? The biblical root, of course, comes in the gospel of the first Sunday when Jesus is in the desert and tempted and fasting for 40 days and so on. But our practice of the season of Lent, meaning 40 days prior to the celebration of Easter, really did not come into existence until quite late in the 4th century. It's first mentioned in the documents of the Council of Nicaea around 325. So Lent, as we know it, as a 40-day period prior to Easter, is rather late in coming. We do have evidence from St. Irenaeus, for example, who lived in the 2nd century, died around the year 200, of uh, the practice here and there of people fasting or going through some sort of penitential acts in reference to Jesus and what he did in the desert prior to his public ministry. But the practice of Lent as we know it comes later. It's really tied into the catechumenate, Mm. which was the program to prepare persons for baptism and reception into the church. Mm. Historically, what happened is that In the 300s, the early 300s, when Constantine became the emperor, Mm -hmm. Christians were allowed to practice in public and in the open, Mm -hmm. where they had not been allowed to do that prior. And so large numbers of people, adults especially, were becoming Christian, Mm -hmm. and they would go through a period of uh, preparation and formation, sometimes a couple of years. Mm -hmm. But then, those final weeks prior to Easter, before they would be baptized and make their final commitment, they were to undergo a special purification, a special preparation. Those who had already been baptized said to themselves, well, maybe we ought to go through a period of preparation and purification also. And so thus began the practice of the whole church, joining with those catechumens, those Mm -hmm. preparing to be baptized, joining with them in some sort of preparation for the Easter feast. Now, you had mentioned, uh, of course, we know 40 days of Lent, and yet when we count days from Ash Wednesday to a Holy Thursday, that doesn't (coughs) always calculate. So where do we get that 40 days? Well, we don't don't count the Sundays. Mm -hmm. We speak of the first, second, third Sunday of Lent. It's interesting, but we don't count the Sundays as days of... uh, They are not days of fast or abstinence. You see, in the early church and... Mm -hmm. Through the centuries, there was a strict observance of fasting, Mm -hmm. but Sunday was always an exception, and so Sundays were not counted. Been relaxed in recent years, especially since the Second Vatican Council, Mm -hmm. uh, where we have only two days of strict fast and abstinence, Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, and then, of course, Catholics are encouraged to abstain from meat also on Fridays. It's not near the rigid program that uh, the early church would have known. Now, practice of the Lenten season, when someone would, let's say, give something up, which is a common practice among many Catholics, do they not do that on Sundays, or are they true to the spirit of the season? Well, I suppose if to be true to the spirit of the season, mm-hmm. you would continue to do that on Sunday, the same with prayer and with the other uh, charitable almsgiving that would not be interrupted, but that's up to the individual. Certainly today, that's up to the individual to make that commitment if he or she wants to. Let's talk about those three uh, hallmarks of the Lenten season, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. We find those biblically. Why do we lift those up in the season of Lent? Well, they were traditional in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. We have that famous reading on Ash Wednesday which we hear, hear those. The gospel, Jesus 
talked about almsgiving. That's the gospel for Ash Wednesday is about almsgiving, prayer, and fasting. So they were traditional practices. And when you think about it, they're simply ways of deepening our love for God and love for one another. Namely, our love of God expressed in prayer and, of course, our love of others through almsgiving and charity. Of course, the season of Lent is kind of depicted as a penitential time. And yet, when we come to the fourth Sunday of Lent, what we call in Latin Laetari Sunday, we have a different bent. Why do we do that? It's a spirit of rejoicing. Laetari is a Latin word meaning to rejoice, and it comes from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, urging people to rejoice in the Lord. We do the same thing prior to Advent. Mm -hmm. I suppose it kind of is a a liturgical way of saying, well, thank God we're halfway through this and (laughs) and we're well on our way. Sure. Now, in your many years as a pastor, what was something that you really enjoyed about the Lenten season? Because I know many of us priests are not as enthusiastic about the Lenten season because it seems to go on for a long time and we look forward to the celebration of of Holy Week and Easter. But what was it about Lent as a pastor that you enjoyed? Well, as a pastor of two parishes, both rather large parishes, there was always a nice group of persons going through the OCIA, the Order of Christian Initiation of Adults, preparing to either be baptized or be received into the church. So that was the highlight of Lent for me as a pastor, working with them and preparing them and being a part of that Easter vigil celebration. The Easter vigil was my favorite liturgy of the whole year because it always involved baptizing, receiving people into the church. That's, of course, in its roots, that's what Lent was really all about. Mm -hmm. Let's close our show today with a little bit more about that biblical reference of the Transfiguration. We know that that's celebrated next weekend. We always, on the second Sunday of Lent, remember the Transfiguration of the Lord. Why does the church insert that celebration during the Lenten season? Well, it's very interesting because... It's to assure us, as the apostles were assured, that while Jesus is going to undergo suffering and death, and we too will die someday, with, there's always the joy and the assurance of the resurrection. And that cannot be forgotten. That must always be uppermost in our minds. It's interesting that in the common lectionary, some of the Protestants use that same transfiguration is proclaimed only on the Sunday before Lent begins, Mm -hmm. whereas we Catholics do it on the second Sunday. But it's to make the point that it's the resurrection is what this is all about, not the suffering and death, but new life in Christ through his resurrection. Father David Rose, thank you so much for your insights into the Lenten season, and we wish the folks that are with us continued a happy and blessed Lent as we prepare as Catholics to (coughs) celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. For more information, you can go to catholicecho.org. The Catholic Echo Podcast is a production of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Youngstown in cooperation with Cumulus Media Youngstown. I'm your host, Father Jim Corda. Have a blessed day, and may God be with you.